I'm Kurt Loder with an MTV News Brief. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday approved the marketing of the first home testing kit for HIV, the virus thought to cause AIDS. It's called Confide, and it contains a counseling booklet, a coded test card, and a lancet for pricking a fingertip to obtain a blood sample. The card is then sent to a laboratory, and results are supposed to be available after a week by calling a toll-free number. Those testing negative will be notified by a pre-recorded message, but all callers will be able to speak to a trained counselor who will offer local medical referrals if necessary. The Confide HIV testing kits will be available early next month, initially in Texas and Florida, which are among the top five HIV reporting states. That's the news for now. We'll be back with, with more throughout the day here on MTV. Set its June 1st deadline last December. In addition to donations, a number of local bands are planning to play a benefit concert for the Nez Perce cause on May 25th at Pioneer Park in Lewiston. For more information about the Nez Perce Indians, you can write to this address or this email site. Meanwhile, Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder and Jeff Ament were in Chicago on Tuesday night to watch the Chicago Bulls hammer the New York Knicks and afterward to help Bulls star and major Pearl Jam fan Dennis Rodman celebrate his 35th birthday at a local industrial dance club called the Crowbar. Vedder joined blues traveler's John Popper on stage to lead the crowd in a round of happy birthday and Popper later sat in with the resident acid house band Liquid Soul. Speaking of Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, they're among the bands whose music is run through a collection of vintage synthesizers on a new album called The Moog Cookbook, concocted by Roger Manning, formerly of Jellyfish, now with Imperial Drag, and his partner Brian Keyu. The keyboards employed are such old analog faves as Moogs, Arps, Hammonds, and Farfises, and the tunes transformed include Pearl Jam's Even Flow, Green Day's Basket pa Case, R.E.M.'s The One I Love, and this one, Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun. <laughs> be happy to see that look coming back. We're hoping to have the Moog Cookbook Masterminds playing live on the Weekend Rock this weekend, so do tune in. In a related note, the Farfisa-crazed Anglo-French band Stereolab is on tour here right now, supporting its swell new album, Emperor Tomato Ketchup. The group plays Lupo's in Providence, Rhode Island on Friday, and the Trocadero in Philadelphia on Saturday. And finally, last week came news of something called the 3x5 Tour. Three new bands out on the road charging $5 per admission per show. This week, inflation having apparently kicked in, comes news of the $7 bill tour. Three bands again, the Nixons, Gravity Kills, and Hog, for $7. The tour will begin on, in Detroit on June 4th. That's the news for now. We'll be back with more later here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. MTV News. Finally, bowing to entreaties from fellow Republicans that he resign as majority leader of the Senate, where he's been a fixture since 1968, and start running for the presidency full-time, Bob Dole stunned observers on Wednesday by announcing he'll leave his Senate seat altogether by June 11th, with two years left to go in his fifth term. Here's some more of what Dole, a Kansas senator, had to say. The campaign for the president begins in earnest. It is my obligation to the Senate and to the people of America to leave behind all the trappings of power, all comfort, and all security. So today I announce that I will forgo the privileges, not only the office of the majority leader, but of the United States Senate itself. Bob Dole. GOP leaders apparently convinced Dole that as long as he remained embroiled in the daily legislative push and pull of the Senate, he was a sitting duck for crafty Democrats. Dole's likely to be replaced as Senate Majority Leader either by Don Nichols of Oklahoma or conservative stalwart Trent Lott of Mississippi. Kansas Governor Bill Graves will make a temporary appointment to fill Dole's Senate seat until the next election. In other capital news, singer Mariah Carey joined President Bill Clinton at the White House on Wednesday afternoon to sing her 1993 hit Hero for the families of 174 police officers from around the country who were killed in the line of duty last year. Here's a moment. Good band. The occasion of Carey's performance was the 15th annual National Peace Officers Memorial Day service. Meanwhile, in the south of France, overseas distributors of the upcoming Madonna movie version of Evita got an advanced look at some footage from the film at the Cannes Film Festival on Tuesday, and reportedly they really, really liked it. 
Had the distributors been underwhelmed, the gnashing of teeth would no doubt have echoed from one end of the quasette to the other, but most of them were enthused by the 10-minute clip, which included director Alan Parker's sweeping crowd scenes and a musical interlude featuring Madonna and her co-stars Antonio Banderas and Jonathan Price. Said one Australian distributor, a woman, quote, Madonna opened her mouth and it was spine-tingling. Nothing new there, but the woman added, quote, it was chilling. I had shivers right up my spine. Again, the spine. The video, which features a new ballad written for the movie by composer Andrew Lloyd Webber and lyricist Tim Rice, is scheduled to open in New York City and Los Angeles on Christmas Day and across the country on January 10th. Those who just can't wait are invited to tune in our Evita movie special on June 13th, immediately preceding the MTV Movie Awards. Finally, in Nassau County, New York, a trimmed-down version of a ban on the sale of mock ecstasy herbal products has been okayed by county legislators. The ban, prompted by the recent death of a local student who took an overdose of a product called Ultimate Exphoria, originally targeted all products containing the substance ephedrine, but now exempts FDA-approved weight loss and muscle-building supplements for customers over 18. Legislators felt the exemption would lessen the threat of legal challenges. That's the news for now. We'll be back with more later here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. I'm Kurt Loder with MTV News. The American Academy of Pediatrics announced on Tuesday its opposition to parental notification laws for teenagers seeking abortions. 29 states now have laws allowing teen girls to make abortion decisions without notifying their parents if they can convince a judge that they're mature enough to make such a decision. The Academy contends that parental notification laws delay access to abortions often past the first trimester of pregnancy, which is felt to be the safest period in which to abort. An Academy spokeswoman also said that three out of five teens voluntarily confide in their parents. Those who don't may have parental problems or come from abusive homes. However, a spokeswoman for the National Conference of Catholic Bishops said that, quote, the Academy is sticking its nose into what should be parental business. Girls are better served by talking to their parents than to an abortionist who will make money on this. In TV news, meanwhile, NBC has reversed itself and decided to go ahead and cancel LL Cool J's middling sitcom In the House, currently ranked 49th out of 130 network shows, but a top 10 hit among black viewers. Having already deep-sixed Will Smith's Fresh Prince of Bel-Air series, NBC, once the home of such across-the-board black hits as Sanford and Son and The Cosby Show, is now left with no sitcoms featuring black leads on its fall schedule for the first time since the show Julia back in 1968. In the House is reportedly likely to be picked up by UPN, and while LL was not immediately available for comment, he did tell us recently that he's not sure he'll be staying out on the road with the R. Kelly tour for the whole summer. I've been toured in many years. I might want to go home with my wife and my three kids and laugh a little bit and watch some Gilligan's Island reruns and drink some 7 Up Me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to run around the country all summer long sweating and falling over speakers. I have to think about it, you know. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not 16. Meanwhile, there's more bad news for singer and trouble magnet Bobby Brown, this time from the New York State Supreme Court, which has ruled that a $1 million fraud and breach of contract suit against Brown, filed by an elderly woman named Althea Durant, must proceed. Durant charges that she ponied up a $30,000 advance to get Brown to play a concert in Trinidad in 1993, and that after Brown canceled, the money was never returned. Durant's lawyer says his client has already had a heart attack while pursuing Brown, and that she, quote, just hopes she lives long enough to see the case finally come to court. Brown's attorney could not be reached for comment. That's the news for now. We'll be back with more later here on MTV. MTV News. You hear it first. Woo!